welcome to Manchester, the northwest city famous for its rich musical heritage. Home to bands like The Smiths, New Order, Joy Division and Brit pop legend Oasis. And in more recent years, the city has produced talent such as the Cortinas, Everything Everything and the Dutch Uncles, to name but a few. Today on the Manchester Music Review Show, we've got interviews with emerging band Last Regards about their recent visit to Manchester's Roadhouse venue. And we catch a word from the tapestry before their headline gig at Factory and ask what it was like to support the Cortinas on their recent countrywide tour. We also spoke to Manchester venue veteran Jay Taylor about his wealth of experience in promoting for venues in the city and what inspired him to open the Ruby Lounge in Manchester's Northern Quarter, as well as venturing out onto the streets of Manchester to ask the public about their musical experiences. It's going to be an action-packed show, so stick around. Hello and welcome to the Manchester Music Review Show. I'm Lucy. And I'm Matt. And this, that was just a brief taste of what's coming up in the next 20 minutes. Now, being a Manchester music review show, it'd be rude not to boast about some of the history this city has to offer. Although, along with the bands mentioned in the introduction, Factory Records, now Factory Nightclub, recorded artists like Joy Division, New Order and The Happy Mondays, all of which played at the Hacienda, making it one of the world's most famous clubs in the 1990s, before it closed its doors in 1997. But its legacy lives on in the form of Factory Nightclub, where one of our interviews actually takes place. But we didn't just go to Factory. As you heard in the introduction, we've been out and about to a handful of Manchester venues to bring you the lowdown on what live music Manchester has to offer at the moment. Now, we went to the Roadhouse to catch up with Last Regards, who are an alternative rock band from Liverpool, made up of Matthew on vocals, Jonathan on bass, Jonathan and Jack on guitar and Stu on drums. They frequently play gigs in small venues around the northwest, including Manchester venues like Retro Bar and Roadhouse. We asked them about their music and what they think about gigging in Manchester in general, and here's what they had to say. Hi, uh, we're Last Regard. We're an alternative rock band from Liverpool. How did you join me? Um, school, college. College, yeah. yeah. So how long has your band been together? Seven years, I can't, I can't but under that. Last Regard, yeah. five years. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of music do you play? It's like alternative rock. When we started out, it was it had like elements of post hardcore, didn't it? Yeah. Like a few emo pop punky aspects to it. I have quite a few influences actually. Uh, Peter Gabriel, Genesis, uh, In Me, a band called In Me, uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Best That's gig shit, we've ever played man. would be at O2 Academy in Liverpool, and it was like we were supporting a band called Octane OK, and the that place the place was rammed. Yeah, that was cool. And it was yeah. pretty cool. Like. Because you're, as you're inside, is it harder to find places to gig at? I won't say it's harder to find place to gig, it's getting the right gigs. Yeah. yeah you can gig a, every day of the yeah. week if you want, yeah. but like sometimes it's not worth finding the travel getting there to play yeah. them, if that makes sense. Uh, if you could make up a band of like whoever you want, like oh. who would it be and why? I'd have Michael Jackson singing, I'd have Slash on guitar, Eric Singer on drums, and I'd play bass. I'd just be the fourth member of Blink-182. <laughs> That's better than my answer, I was thinking. Yeah. It was just a folk duo between the Pope and Hitler. It's like been the biggest highlight of being in a band like... Being with your mates like all the time. Mates? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not mates. So oh, everyone oh, dislikes well, you. We're, we're, we're all mates apart from no Maxim. How do you think people react to you like the first time hearing music? Uh, I think they're very polite. That's a good answer. They're very patient. The yeah, first no, time, no, the first time I played with you, I walked off stage. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> Only mum's reaction. Oh, you're that good, aren't you? If you could sum up Latter Guards in three words, what would it be? Uh, best and worst band. I'm gonna have to steal yeah. that. Off, so I stole that. I'm sorry. But yeah. Three words in band. Uh, hopeful, <laughs> patient. <laughs> and, uh, at least my words. Awful. Can just at least. And play. awful. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite there. We are trying. <laughs> we, are trying. <laughs> we are trying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. As you can hear then, these guys have known each other for about six or seven years now. And when you listen to that interview, you can really hear it really comes through. Just the banter that's flown between them. And it's but it's interesting that um, when we had a look at the lineup uh, on the Facebook, it has actually changed over the years. So they must have really been through um, some tough times together. And like he said, when on the, on the first performance, he walked off stage, one of them. Um, so you can tell that that banter <laughs> has been around for a while. And I guess it's great that they do have that. And I, I guess it will rub off on the on the fans as well if they're in. Yeah, I mean, small even venues. when even when we went to interview them, they were so welcoming and friendly, and they just they just made you happy to be around. I mean, if I was a 
booking artists, I'd be happy to book one of them because yeah, they're uh, really enthusiastic. Big things to come for those. Definitely. And I mean, enthusiasm is one of those big qualities that you'd have to have if you're going to get booked. And um, I believe you went to go interview somebody who actually books bands like Last Regards, don't you? Yes, I did indeed. I, since the Ruby Lounge opened its doors to Manchester's Northern Quarter in 2008, it's played host to some of the music industry's brightest new talents, including the likes of Lana Del Rey, Florence and the Machine, Two Door Cinema Club and Ben Howard, artists that are now playing to huge crowds in some of the world's largest venues. However, there's a twist. The Ruby Lounge is only a 350 capacity venue. So how have they booked such big artists? The secret to the venue's ongoing success lies with the brains behind the Ruby Lounge, Jay Taylor, who opened the Ruby Lounge and now oversees all its events and management. I went to speak to Jay and asked him how he came to open the Ruby Lounge and why he felt Manchester was the right place for the venue. My name's Jay Taylor. I'm one of the people who runs a venue in the middle of Manchester called the Ruby Lounge. I also do some other bits and pieces of music stuff. I was in bands. But I was always had other jobs, you know. I was a jeweller, I, I worked in a comic book store, I worked as a sexual health counsellor, I did some youth work, I did, I did tons of different things. But was always kind of like dipping in and out of music and, and always played in bands. And then I had the opportunity, I started promoting, and the opportunity to go for a job being the in house promoter at night and day on Oldham Street, which I got. And then promoted there for three and a half years, left there, promoted at a casino for a year, got made redundant given a bunch of money, took some time off and then I was sat in night and day with a cup of coffee and then a guy I know who's one of the people who used to put up posters around Manchester said, you know, what are you doing? I kind of went, oh, you know, I haven't done much for six months really. I've kind of been sat here drinking coffee for six months and uh, he went, well, my mate's got an empty space around the corner and he's thinking that he might work as a music venue. Do you want to come and look at it? And I went, yeah, sure. So I put the coffee down, got brought in here, had a look at the space and went, you know, yeah, I, I know this will work as a music venue. Sat down with the person who had the lease sort of like an hour later we were opening a music venue you know you've got to be able to kind of make it work and so part of it was me understanding how you make a venue from scratch me understanding you know how you book bands into it you know who you have to speak to to make that work you know people trusting me I suppose there's an element of trust involved certainly I've lived in London I lived in West Yorkshire for a bit and so I've lived I've lived in around in around the country but I kind of adore this city and understand it I understand how, how it works you know and I, and I like the people in here to have that energy batting around kind of like a badminton ball is it's really palpable isn't it it becomes a lot more intense personal experience which is kind of why i like small venues why i've always liked small venues it can happen in madison square gardens it can happen in the mn arena not many people are good at it in those spaces you have to be kind of it's a special skill to be good at it in those spaces it's like a very strange and, and exciting thing isn't it you know So that was Jay Taylor from the Ruby Lounge. Um, he was a very, very busy man. Um, great guy. He was dead interesting to talk, in, to, talk to. Um, and I was sort of in this little back office with him where um, he had all the artists sign their name on the wall who already played there. Um, so he had, like like I said, Lana Del Rey up there, um, Little Comets. He's a, a wealth of catalogue, uh, like a massive catalogue of bands um, that have played there in the past. And as I was interviewing him, there was a band out in the front um, so he was busy trying to run around and organise those, um, whilst also being on the phone to different record labels yeah. and different agents to try and get new bands in. Um, and he had this massive wall chart with all the, the dates coming up and when, when the venue was free and it was packed, it really was packed. I mean, he just, um, he just really seems like he knows what's going on. He knows the ins and outs of the industry. I mean, I wouldn't have thought of half the things he explained about what goes into organising a venue. I mean... I'm pretty sure the the average person wouldn't think about well the Wi-Fi it, it, and he did go into like the fine details. He even because he obviously has had experiences um of going round and gigging around the country. Um, he put a lot of thought into this venue. Um, even down to the fine details, as I said, um, where there's facilities to wash the clothes for bands if they've been touring for a while. Um, and there's also Wi-Fi for the bands. Um, they've got like a kitchen that can cater food for them and stuff. So uh, a lot of thought went into that. As a, as a venue, did you like it? Personally? Yeah, I, I really liked it. Yeah, it's 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 great in there. It's a lovely little venue. Did you feel like you were more involved with the band since yeah, it's a bit yeah. smaller? Yeah, it was more intimate. So um, I think I'd prefer the smaller the smaller venues. I think. Mm, I can imagine most people do. But uh, we're going to cut to a quick ad break. But stick around because after the break we get your say on live music, give you a roundup of Manchester music festivals going on this summer. 
And we've got the interview with the tapestry for you as well, so... Are you ginger and looking for love? You don't find a magic partner because you have bright locks? Well, we have the ticket for you, Ginger Dating. The dating site with a difference. We on a cake to gingers. We help gingers across the nation to find love, couple and fellow gingers together. Because what more do you need in common than your bright hair colour? Visit our website, gingerdating.com. Spice up your life with Salford Sightseeing Tours. We've got a great selection of pound shops and charity shops on offer, as well as the world famous markets. And when you're all shopped out, there are plenty of bakeries to get a snack from. Get yourself down to Salford today. You don't even know what you're missing. Next, we sent our reporters James and Paul out onto the streets of Manchester to get your views on live music. What's your favourite band you've seen live? I'd have to say, have to say the editors. They were great. Like it wasn't just the music; it was like the lighting and stuff. I'd say they were a bit like electronic pop and a bit of rock. I once saw Kings of Leon live. At, well, I've seen them live twice: once at the MEN Arena and once at the Manchester Cricket Ground. I think the cricket ground was like one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Metallica, by far. So I've seen a lot of acts, and um, they're the most professional acts that I've seen. They sounded better than their albums. Oh, probably um, you two, because they sound live just exactly the way they do on record. And I'm talking about record vinyl. What's your favourite live music venue? In Manchester, it's definitely the Apollo, the O2 Apollo. I've been there quite a few times, and as it's quite a small venue, it's like the perfect place to kind of have a more intimate concert. Best live music venue I've been to, I'd say, was when I went to see Coldplay at the Etihad. As much as I hate to say it, it was actually really good. I think my favourite venue is probably Night and Day Cafe and the Roadhouse. It's just the really intimate venues, like, it's just a cool vibe. This is uh, showing my roots, it's in, um, in Sydney. It's at the entertainment centre. It's about a 12,000 capacity and uh, the acoustics are perfect. Oh, it's definitely Manchester Academy. I prefer much smaller, more intimate shows. Have you got a certain dream gig that you'd like to go to? I'd love to see the Rolling Stones at Glastonbury this year. I so want to go. Oh, dream gig, I made it. But no, it's a bit late for that now. I would have absolutely loved see I made life. I really wanted to go and see Beyonce but the ticket sold out within like an hour so I'm really glad that I can go and see Beyonce so yeah I'd really like to go and see her. Are you planning on going any festivals this summer? I might be going to a download actually. Yeah I, I'm, I really want to go to V and um, maybe if I can get a ticket to Leeds last second but probably not. <laughs> yeah I'm gonna go to Kendall Call in this one. Headlining is Primal Scream, The Charlatans and Basement Jacks. And I think I find it funny that from those interviews, um, as we discussed about the Ruby Lounge, uh, a lot of people prefer the smaller, more intimate venues that they mentioned um, and prefer to feel like they're actually in with the the, the band and it's a lot more intimate. Um, Yeah, and I've noticed a lot of people mentioned a lot of big festival names there like Glastonbury, V, Leeds, and we know that those are some big names. It might be hard to get tickets for that. So what we've done, we found a couple of... uh, festivals around Manchester to maybe get you a bit excited because they're a bit more accessible. You know all the flyers that you've been getting through your letterbox and the posters you've seen dotted around town? They're all for a festival called Part Life and it's not to be ignored. Now, this Manchester festival started in 2010 in Plattsfield Park, which is right in the heart of the student area of the city. Because it's so popular, this means that it's had to move to an even bigger venue this year, to Heaton Park, which is just north of Manchester. That's hosted concerts such as the Stone Roses, the Happy Mondays and Oasis. This year, artists such as Johnny Marr, Example, Plan B, The Maccabees and Everything Everything, as well as many, many more, will be playing across the eight arenas over the two days. Tickets range from £45 for a day pass or £70 for the full weekend package and upwards for VIP. Now, I know as a student personally, I don't just have that money lying around, so it might be a bit hard to scrape, but there are loads of opportunities for you to work at Park Life as a festival volunteer, which means that you'll be checking wristbands, showing people around and just generally helping out. Or you can work in the bar and merchandise sections if you have a bit more experience. 
you have to do a minimum of eight hours work across the weekend to get this free ticket. However, the downside is you can't choose when you work. So unfortunately, whatever you're given, you just have to work with. But remember, if you're on a budget, eight hours work for a free ticket isn't bad at all. It's not. I totally agree with you there. If you're from around Manchester, chances are that you will have heard of Park Life. However, a festival that you may not have heard of called Dot to Dot is also coming to Manchester in the next couple of weeks. Now, Dot to Dot has continued to showcase the best new acts from around the world since starting in Nottingham eight years ago, featuring the likes of Lady Tron, Radio 4 and The Rakes. The festival now takes place in Bristol, Nottingham and Manchester and has put on acts such as The XX, Mumford & Sons, Florence and & Machine and Metronomy in the past. This year, the festival is taking place in Manchester on the Friday the 24th of May. Headlining are Dry the River, Tom Adele, Benjamin Francis Leftwich, Lucy Rose and the 1975. But further down the line up, bands that you might not have heard of like Chapel Club, Satellite Stories and Finley are also definitely worth a watch. Now Dot to Dot claim, we pride ourselves on bringing thousands of music fans, eclectic mix of innovative, exciting and groundbreaking acts in intimate settings which we feel complement the artists. And this lineup doesn't disappoint. One band that have been touring recently are The Tapestry. We went to see them headline at this Feeling Festival, which took place in Manchester a few weeks ago. The Tapestry are this small, unsigned, independent band that popped up in the Manchester music scene about five or six years ago. And although they aren't a household name yet, they have been named one of this Feeling's ones to watch in 2013. And they have supported big acts such as Pete Doherty, frontman for... British rock band Liberty and Baby Shambles, which I'm sure you know. And they've recently toured around the UK with the Cortinas. And one of their performances actually attracted the attention of Brit pop legend Noel Gallagher. Uh, so we managed to talk to them before one of their gigs at the Infamous Factory and ask them what it was like to tour with the Cortinas. The Cortinas are from Manchester. Oh, and, and they've put us on mint tour with them. So um, they've really looked after us, but... They, they did a great thing for us when they, they didn't have to. All, all the other bands they had supporting them were all signed and, and we're not. What it was like to play to an audience that didn't know you. And every night it was it was a thousand faces that came to see the Cortinas and you were kind of stood between them and the Cortinas. But even in that situation we found we had groups of people that had just been dancing like... They didn't want to see us, they wanted to see them. There was the people that had looked blank lately, but then the tubes managed to capture at least a few pockets of people that had gone mental and you know, then you know you're doing the right thing. If those people then go away and buy a record, you've got, you know, say 100 fans from that gig that you wouldn't have had before. So I think people react quite well to it, but it depends what state of mind. I mean, I'll watch the one that accepts any kind of music. <laughs> so if you've missed them or you just want to listen to some of the new music, um, the Tapestry are performing at Band on the Wall in Manchester on the 10th of May. Now, I've actually seen the Cortinas live. I saw them at the MEN and I saw Liam Frey perform at the Ritz in Manchester, which was an acoustic set. And the crowd that generally go are very much um, proud Mancunians. They've sort of people that are into the Stone Roses, Oasis, and all that kind of uh, that kind of Get thing. Get on well the Tapestry crowd then, So they? I think that the Tapestry do sort of fall into that category of um, a proud Mancunian band, and by the... It really the comes Cortinas. through in their music. You yeah, really tell. I mean, yeah. when I when I watch them, I can really tell a lot of their influences. You don't need to ask them to know. Their musical influences are quite clear, aren't they? Yeah. So I'm sure that supporting um, the Cortinas was a massive thing for them. Um, and obviously, it... it brings them out to a lot more people a lot more people will recognize their music from now on they're there on youtube they're there on myspace they're there on spotify they're everywhere and they have been for a while but they've never quite had that recognition that i think they maybe deserve but that's just my personal opinion like they said this feeling's one to watch in 2013 so they're, they're definitely worth watching and when we went to see them after that interview they were fantastic weren't they so I mean, um, I personally know one of the members of the band yeah. and I'm not going to comment on what they're like outside. It's <laughs> basically the same, but yeah. they're always a laugh. Going to their gigs, it's just, the vibe is just insane. And to be fair, I think it looked like they had a few loyal fans there that, as well. Um, I mean, when we went, there's people up on the yeah. shoulders falling yeah. over. I mean, it was fantastic. lead really singers, 50-year-old mothers there at the front dancing her head off. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they created a great atmosphere and they all they all bounce off each other. But like we said, if you've missed them or you just want to listen to some new music, again, they're playing at Band on the Wall in Manchester on the 10th of May. So that about wraps up all we've got time for. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening and we hope you have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye.